common example of torque that needs to be calculated is the torque caused by the force of gravity acting on an object, sometimes called the gravitational torque. The way that we calculate the gravitational torque is finding the center of mass of the object, treating all of the mass as being concentrated at the center of mass, letting the force of gravity act at that center of mass, and then calculating the torque due to the force of gravity acting at the center of mass. To find torque, we can either break the force into components and take the perpendicular component of the force times the r vector, the distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is being applied, or we can look at the line of action and find the perpendicular distance to that line of action, called the moment arm or the lever arm, times the force. In this case, the force of gravity is perpendicular to the r vector, and so the torque is going to be this force of gravity times this distance. But this distance that we're looking at is the distance from the center of mass to the pivot point, to the axle that it's rotating around. In this situation that's shown, this force of gravity would cause this object to rotate around clockwise. And so in this equation, it's showing that the gravitational torque is negative to say that it's clockwise, but it's the torque is the force of gravity, m times g, the total mass of the object, m, times free fall acceleration, g, and then x is the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. It's this distance between your axle and your center of mass. In situations where the force of gravity was not perpendicular to the r vector, you would need to find the components. But here, since all of the force is perpendicular to the r vector, the torque is that gravitational force mg times that perpendicular distance x. So let's look at a numerical problem where we calculate the gravitational torque acting. We have this 500 kilogram steel beam. The center of mass of that steel beam is going to be right at the center. It's four meters long, and so the center of mass is two meters from either end of the beam. And it's supported by this fulcrum that's 1.2 meters from the right end of the beam. To calculate the gravitational torque, we consider all 500 kilograms as being concentrated at that center of mass. And so the force of gravity that's acting is 500 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That center of mass is 2 meters from either end of the rod, but what we need is we need this distance between the center of mass and the fulcrum, the center of mass and the pivot point. It's going to rotate around this top of this fulcrum, and so that distance is 0.8 meters. So we treat all of the mass as being concentrated at the center of mass. We treat the weight as acting at the center of mass. So the force of gravity is 4,900 newtons. The torque is this force of gravity. We would break it into components, but here all of the force of gravity is perpendicular to the r vector. The r vector points from this pivot point to where the force is being applied. And so the torque due to this gravitational force is the force 4,900 newtons times this distance of 0.8 meters. So the torque due to that force of gravity, the gravitational torque is 3,920 newton meters. The units for torque are newton meters. And so that torque is 3,900 20 newton meters, and this torque is counterclockwise. This weight would cause this beam to rotate counterclockwise around that pivot point. In this slide, we have a massless wheel that has a radius r, and we're going to attach one or more masses to the edge of the wheel. In this first case, we're attaching the mass at this 3 o'clock position, and we're going to calculate the torque due to the weight of this mass that's attached to the edge. This force of gravity, mg, is acting straight down, 
the R vector points from the axis of rotation, the axle of the wheel, to where the force is being applied. In this case, all of this force is perpendicular to the R vector, so this is the position where the torque would be the greatest. The torque that's acting in this first case is the force of gravity mg times this distance r because all of the force is perpendicular to r. So it's F perpendicular times r. In this second case, the mass is over here around the 4 or 5 o'clock position on the wheel. And there are two ways to do this. One of the ways would be to take the force of gravity and try and find the component of the force of gravity that's perpendicular to the r vector. That could easily be done. You could go through and use some trigonometry to figure that out. The thing that makes that a little bit more difficult is when you're finding the components, you would need to figure out where this angle theta comes up when you're doing the components. This is a situation where it's a little bit easier to use the perpendicular distance, that moment arm or that lever arm between the axis of rotation and the line of action times the force, the R perpendicular times F version of the torque. So the line of action is this vertical line. The force of gravity is acting straight down. So the line of action is this vertical line. And so we need this perpendicular distance. And we can see that that perpendicular distance is very easy to calculate. That's this horizontal distance in the drawing. That distance would be r times the cosine of theta. And so the torque in this case would be the force of gravity mg times that perpendicular distance r cosine theta. And so here the torque is still clockwise but the torque is smaller in this second case than it was in the first case. Typically we're given the angle that the force is acting, which makes it easy to break the force into components. This is a situation where the angle that we're given is not exactly the angle that we need, and so it definitely could be done where you could find the perpendicular component of the force, but this is one where the other version is a little bit easier. You're less likely to make a mistake. In this third case, where the mass is at the six o'clock position on the wheel, the torque due to the weight of this object is going to be zero. The line of action passes right through the axis of rotation. The line of action passes right through the point that this is going to be rotating around. And so that is something to look at. If the line of action passes through the pivot point, the torque is zero. That perpendicular distance between the line of action and the pivot point is zero. If I hung a mass at this lowest point and let it go, it's just going to sit there. Whereas if I attach the mass at either of these first two positions, it's going to cause the wheel to rotate around clockwise. Here. If I just place the mass at this location, the wheel is not going to turn. There is no torque to make the wheel turn. In this last case, if I have one mass, mass 2, that's at the edge of the wheel, and another mass, m1, that's halfway out along that radius at a distance r over 2 from the center of the wheel, we would calculate the torque due to each one of those masses just like we did in those first two cases. Here, because both of them are along the x-axis, both of them are at that three o'clock position, the force of gravity is perpendicular to the r vector. So this is where the torque is going to be maximum. The torque due to the first mass would be the weight of the first mass, m1 times g times this distance r over 2 plus the second weight m2g times this distance r. If we were looking at something that was a little bit more similar to the second case where m1 was down here and m2 was down around the 4 or 5 o'clock position on the wheel, you would have to do like we did in the second case where we would have to find that perpendicular distance. You would still do the same type of thing 
you would just have a smaller torque. You would need to figure out either what that perpendicular distance is, how much smaller that perpendicular distance is, or you would have to break each of the weights into components. But if you have more than one gravitational force that's acting, just like any other problem, when you calculate the net torque, you find the individual torques and you add them together. Both of these were clockwise torques. So the net torque is clockwise and it's those two torques added together. So let's look at one more example. We have a meter stick and the mass of the meter stick is two kilograms. And there's a hole in the meter stick a quarter of the way along the meter stick. So it's 0.25 meters from the center or it's 0.25 meters from the end. That hole is placed on a nail hanging in a wall and this meter stick is pulled up to an angle of 30 degrees. The meter stick makes an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical. We know that if we release this meter stick it's going to rotate clockwise. And the reason that it rotates clockwise is because of the gravitational torque that's acting on it. So in this problem we want to calculate the gravitational torque when it's in this position. We're calculating it specifically for this starting position when it's at an angle of 30 degrees. As it swings down, the torque is changing. But we're looking at the torque when it's at this position at an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical. We consider all of the mass of the meter stick to be concentrated at the center of mass, which is right at the center of the meter stick, 0.5 meters from either end. The force of gravity is 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, or 19.6 newtons. So this force of gravity of 19.6 newtons is acting right at the center of mass. Torque is R perpendicular times F the perpendicular distance from the hinge to the line of action times the force, or it's the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector times the R vector, the distance from the hinge to where the force is being applied. In this problem, we're going to do it like the last slide where we're going to look at this lever arm, or this moment arm, this perpendicular distance between the hinge and the line of action. So the torque will be 19.6 newtons times the perpendicular distance. It's this horizontal distance from the hinge. The force of gravity is acting straight up and straight down and so we need the distance that's perpendicular to that which is in the x direction. We need to know how far away this line of action is horizontally from that hinge. This distance along the meter stick was 0.25 meters. That was the distance from the hinge to the center of mass. We need this horizontal component of that distance. That perpendicular distance is d times the sine of theta. And so the torque is 19.6 newtons times 0.25 times the sine of 30 degrees. Again, this horizontal distance was 0.25 times the sine of 30 degrees. And so the gravitational torque is clockwise and it's 2.45 Newton meters. Calculating torque due to the force of gravity or gravitational torque is not any different than calculating torque in other situations. But a lot of situations that we look at involve the force of gravity, and so gravitational torque ends up being a very important concept as we look at rotation. There are going to be a lot of problems that we look at that involve gravitational torque and calculating the gravitational torque to either figure out how much force is needed to keep something from rotating, so we'll look at some rotational equilibrium problems, or once we calculate the gravitational torque, we might then use that to find the angular acceleration of the object. Both of those are things that we're going to look at in later videos.